a little bit of an introduction to myself. Um, uh, you probably know me from Twitter, but I mostly complain about uh, airlines and, uh, and uh, things like that. So I don't really post much on Twitter uh, tech related, which I think it's, uh, it's a shame from my side. But what I wanted to, to talk here today to you about is um, uh, recently I've been laid off and I was going through a number of um, kind of like cycles, um, you know, recruiters approached me and then I was put forward to the company and uh, get, had a couple of interviews, um, had a couple of uh, uh, tests to be done. And um, interesting fact I've noticed is that um, uh, many companies ask you like questions uh, like, for example, what is solid principles? And and then we talk deeper with them and it's like, you know, they, they oh, we use Laravel. Okay, fine, you use Laravel. So why are you interested in so, solid principles if you if you use the framework which actually breaks, uh, you know, uh, breaks all of them, like, you know, using the, uh, uh, using Laravel access to the database is basically model knows how to access database by itself. So it's kind of like breaking the, the, the very first principle. But so one of the one of these companies I was applying for, uh, they made they asked me to to create an kind of like a presentation application, a uh, little API, uh, probably not as good. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, it doesn't have a feature like open API specification. Uh, Lorna was talking about and what I would really like to try now. But um, I shared that with Jakub at some point and asked him for his opinion. And Jakub came up with a brilliant idea that I should have a talk and share my experience. So whatever you see today um, in this talk and whatever I say, it's highly opinionated. It's it's my approach. And um, if, you, if you agree with it, it's fine. If you disagree with it, I would like to hear your opinion. Um, it's, uh, as I said, it's highly opinionated. It's what makes my life easier. And unfortunately, uh, or fortunately, I'm a lazy developer, so I don't like to spend too much time coupling myself to, uh, to, to, to frameworks and, um, and other tools. So I try to, 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 to keep my stuff simple and, um, uh, and kind of like easy. Um, if you hear anyone, um, looking that anyone is looking for a symphony developer and you think i'm good you can uh, feel free to recommend me um uh, that's a shameless plug sorry and uh, and one more thing it's very weird talking to a screen where i can't see people uh so uh lorna did great uh, so hopefully I'll, I'll i'll do okay so um i have prepared a code example Unfortunately, I was not able to use the code example I shared with Jakob some time ago. So I had to create something uh, kind of equivalent or similar. Uh, the code example is a basic, uh, basically like a little API, which uh, is supposed to help, um, uh, it's supposed to help uh, uh, the train station manager to, to manage the, uh, the train station they, they work on. Uh, so I've created a couple of like list of a couple of simple rules what the train station should uh, what the what that API should do. So um, uh, a couple of basic uh, rules is that any station uh, should have at least two tracks with long platforms. Uh, that each track will will have a number and can have a platform. It doesn't have to have a platform. The platform can can be either short or long. Um, and a train uh, will have a number and will have a type. And now the type determines what the, what the train can do at the station. So the fast train can just, uh, you know, go through uh, the platform, the track track without platform, or it can go through the uh, track with a long platform. Now the general trains can stop at the long platform, but not on the short uh, platform where local trains can stop at any platform. So this is kind of like a basic uh, uh, basic uh, brief about how, how the application should, uh, what, the applic what the API should do. And uh, this is what I've implemented. And I would like to take you through um, 
a little bit. Uh, uh, the dev stack I've used uh, on it, it's, uh, it's Symfony Flex Skeleton. And I specifically say here that I don't use the website Skeleton. Uh, the main reason for it is that Flex Skeleton has basically nothing included. It's just a dependency injection and just basic uh, wiring and, and that's it. Uh, so if you build an API, you, you, you basically have nothing in, in, in the application. You can just uh, start writing code and add whatever you need as, uh, as you go. Um, to, to help me develop quicker and like hassle-free, I use Docker and Docker Compose, um, mainly because I don't want to install Node on my computer. So uh, if I have to use Node.js or NPM, I, I run it via Docker image. Um, each application can, can have their own PHP version setup or their own dev stack. I can, have, I can run a number of databases. Um, like one project can use Postgres, other project can use, um, uh, can use MySQL, another project I might want to use MariaDB or CouchDB or Mongo. Docker images are available for all major products. It really simplifies uh, development and I don't have to install anything on my, on my computer. And uh, it's, I can just run one command um, using, uh, using uh, I can just run one command to basically uh, get a repository from, from GitHub and have a working environment without uh, worrying about external, feature, external uh, dependencies. I also use Traffic uh, Reverse Proxy. Uh, this is a little tool which uh, helps me avoiding, uh, you know, picking ports uh, where to expose my API. It, it, uh, it, it, it's quite neat. It, uh, it basically uh, lets the, assigns like a, a domain, a local host domain for every, every Docker Compose uh, setup you, you've started. It just requires, um, a couple of labels in your Docker uh, Compose YAML file, and, and then magic happens. Uh, I also create my own make file where I set up a couple of handy tools. So, uh, you know, I don't have to, because I, I, I might not have PHP installed on my, on my machine. So running PHP uh, may require, um, running tests may require to, to run them in, uh, in, in Docker environment. So to, to simplify that, I just have a shortcut methods. It will be all shared in the in, in GitHub repository afterwards, so you'll be able to uh, to have a look and, and see and and um, and comment. Um, if I happen to use anything for front end, I go for Webpack and Core. Uh, I personally struggle with JavaScript and front end dependencies, so I avoid touching that. But I found that Webpack and Core and uh, Yarn to uh, pretty efficient to, to, to manage uh, dependencies uh, for, for the front end and it works pretty well. I've recently uh, done it with uh, Breath as well, uh, which is running PHP and serverless, it worked beautifully. Uh, so, okay, let's go next. Testing. Testing is, uh, uh, is, is quite important to me. I like to, 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 to start writing uh, code from test. Uh, it's not always like that, unfortunately. In the real life, when you, when you build some prototype, you usually just start writing code. And, but if, if, um, if I do a professional work, I like to, to start with, with writing tests. My preferred stack is writing using PHP spec for unit testing. Uh, so it's basically specification. Uh, so you write specification for code and then code which, um, uh, which is sufficient to, to, to pass the specification. Then I, I, I use BHAT for acceptance slash functional testing. Uh, I like BHAT, especially in a professional environment because it's uh, using Gherkin scenarios. It allows easier communication, easier approval with stakeholders, stakeholders reading a scenarios or providing scenarios or contributing to writing scenarios. 
um, feel like empowered that they actually have a say in how the application is shaped. So it's um, it's, it's a pretty 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 cool and neat uh, technique to uh, to 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 kind of get uh, stakeholders involved if if you wish. Uh, then I use PHP PHP unit for integration testing. For example, testing if uh, my repository writes to database correctly. Um, yeah, what's that? Now, the most important bit, uh, or the least important bit, or the most difficult bit for me, it's usually naming things. And I, I, I struggle with naming correctly, and I think naming in programming is, uh, is the most difficult uh, part. Names, the way you name uh, classes, objects, methods, it does matter. And as Lorna said in her uh, presentation, it's important to think about the name because it's, it's, it's a descriptive it, kind of uh, message going forward and will be used in the future. So if you have a, if you have a very clear and descriptive uh, class name or uh, method name, uh, developers will know how to use it. If if the message, if the name is is um, is kind of um, um, confusing, then it will it will lead to errors and uh, uh, it will lead to errors and, um, and and confusion. So, yeah, as I said, it's 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 that easy if you think of it, or it, it's it's very difficult. Um, Right, so um, I said in, in, in the talk that I would like to, to go through a couple of uh, solid principles. Uh, probably everybody, um, I mean, okay, I started in a different way. Uh, at basically every single interview I had, I was asked about solid principles. And maybe uh, my understanding of solid principles is wrong or maybe uh, developers who I was talking to um, kind of had no good understanding of solid principles or they don't use them. Uh, it's To me, it's kind of like a bread and butter. It's um, I don't have to think about using them. It's just like uh, it's kind of embroiled in, in my brain that, you know, the, the way I try to, 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 to build uh, application the way that I, the way I try to think of code is just like if 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 my class starts getting like four dependencies for whatever reason then I, I I instantly know that I need to split it I'm not I'm not thinking about which principle to use it's probably it's good to know principles kind of like from the academic academical point of view but it's 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 part of your experience. Right, it's um, um, don't know. Maybe maybe I'm completely wrong about that. But um, I had a brilliant idea to to, to show you a couple of uh, to go through the principles and show you a simple example which embraces all of them. So let's start. The first principle is a single responsibility principle. It's um, it's the easiest one because it's self-explanatory. Everyone knows what it means, and uh, and that's it. And the question here usually is, uh, what it really means in practice? Does it mean that you know, single responsibility? Does it mean that when you have a controller, does it mean that the controller can have many actions uh, and possibly many multiple different dependencies, or does it mean you should have just one action? So Let's say if you if you have um, if you have a list of uh, if you have list of stations, and then you have a, a, another controller action to list to display information about particular station, would you have two controllers or one? So it's 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 I would say it's difficult to say or hard to say. Depend in my opinion um, if if it's if the controller depends on just one dependency, so you know, on the let's say on the stations repository, then you probably can have multiple methods, multiple actions in the same controller. But you might find a situation where uh, your controller will start growing because each action will require 
a separate set of dependencies. And then suddenly you may end up having controller with four actions and uh, eight uh, dependencies. That, that becomes too big and in my opinion should be, should be split. Another good example is like when you, when you have a repository class uh, and you want to add uh, caching or logging, uh, whether you add it in uh, as a dependency to existing repository or maybe you use decorating pattern uh, to, to decorate that repository and, uh, and to, to, to apply it, like extend the, uh, extend the, mm, uh, extend the behavior of the, of the repository class by, by composition rather than inheritance. Um, open close principle. So uh, that's basically in, for me, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, um, it's a decision between you wanna go for composition or inheritance. And Symfony by default suggests lots of inheritance. So when you create your controller, the recommendation is to, uh, to, to extend the base controller, abstract controller, and then it comes with all the goodies you, you, you want to have at hand. But uh, it ties you closely to the application, to, to the framework, and it kind of um, uh, stops you from, um, uh, it ties you closer to the framework and then changing anything is uh, moving that controller to different framework will become a hassle because you kind of have to um, extract lots of dependencies and inject them in a, in a different way or replace them with, uh, with a new, uh, with, with, with a new, uh, new dependencies. Uh, also, it becomes difficult to, to test because suddenly you have, uh, you don't know what's happening in a abstract class. You, abstract class is not, uh, not the bit which, uh, which you control. And in the future, that abstract class might change, and the behavior of that class might change. So you can kind of, um, kind of shooting yourself in a in a foot because, you know, today it works, tomorrow it won't work, and your your code will fail because you, um, you kind of, you, you were not aware that there were changes in the in upstream code. So, open close principle to me is basically. Uh, instead of avoid inheritance, avoid abstracting, uh, extending abstract classes, and uh, try to make every, every dependency uh, explicit. And if you want to add a extra, uh, extra behavior to, to a particular class, uh, use the deco decorator pattern to, to wrap that class uh, into another class implementing interface, common interface, and uh, adding functionality. Uh, risk of substitution principle. Uh, that's, uh, uh, the principle is bas basically about uh, subtyping. So if your, uh, if your class uh, uh, implements an interface and your uh, your controller requires an interface. It's a basic, uh, 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 basic function of the language. Ba basic. Uh, uh, so, it, it, it's kind of uh, you. You can have multiple. It allows you to have multiple implementations of of the same uh, interface. It's kind of like a contract between uh, your application, what what uh, your code, what the what you want the code to do. Uh, and how you want the code to communicate with uh, with some other parts of uh, of the application. So the perfect example is here. It's uh, we have a find station interface, which exposes one which uh, has one public method, which is find one by station ID, and should return station. So that station can be that uh, interface uh, can be implemented by station doctrine repository or that can be implemented uh, uh, by, let's say, station in memory repository, which we use in testing. Then our controller doesn't really know which one we're gonna use, but it knows that we're gonna use find station. So 
uh, the interface and it expects the interface to uh, in, in ex, yeah, it expects the uh, 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 the class to behave uh, in a particular way. Uh, integrate interface segregation uh, uh, principle. So the principle, the idea is very, very simple. If you have uh, uh, if you have an application, it's um, uh, if you build an application, you probably start with just one, let's say, track repository. But going forward, and when you split your code in a smaller chunks, you split your controllers into smaller one action controllers, it may make sense to split your interface into, uh, into more specialized ones, uh, uh, talking about one action rather than multiple actions being like more specific rather than uh, less uh, uh, being more specific and less generic so it basically allows you to uh, to, to split uh, services into smaller bits uh, and um, and provide uh, uh, and basically like uh, the implementation will be of for those um, for those application for oh, I struggle sorry uh, the implementation of those uh, the, uh, and, and the implementation of those interfaces will result in smaller uh, smaller services providing required functionality. Dependency inversion principle. So it, I think that one is the one which people struggle the most with. Uh, usually, is um, is dependency inversion principle. It's kind of like dependency injection. Uh, dependency inversion basically means that when you have a code, it, when you write an application code, um, it will depend on database, it will depend on, on a template, it will depend on, on UI, it will depend on the external APIs. But you don't know how those APIs uh, behave. You don't, know, you, you don't know yet what the data, which database you're going to use. So instead of like implementing a particular database um, uh, driver directly into your uh, code or your application, uh, you kind of extract that, like hide it behind the uh, interface, and then then basically that that what 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 happens is that your policy layer depends on a service, but that service is not defined. You basically create a contract in the form of interface. So your policy layer uh, expects that there will be a kind of mechanism layer which will provide uh, required uh, uh, behavior, uh, which is defined in a contract in the form of uh, policy service interface. And it can go multiple levels depending how, how complex and how structured your application is. So perfect example is if you have a, a, a stations repository. Uh, so if you have a station and you know you you, you have a let's say a command which needs to save some uh, which needs to find a station. So it doesn't know whether you're gonna load it from database or from from NoSQL database or from API. So you create an interface, find um, find stations with method. And it relays that there will be a, a service which will provide that functionality. So, uh, a single example to, to show that this is from the application I've built. Um, what, what happens here is um, I have a um, up transition, uh, up translation track doctrine repository, which is basically a doctrine implementation of uh, of uh, of a track repository. Um, that that uh, doctrine repository uh, class is uh, uh, decorated by logging track changes. So it's basically whenever uh, this uh, this repository uh, basically acts as kind of like a uh, marking, uh, adding trains to the, uh, like assigning trains to track, and then freeing the track from after the train leaves, uh, leaves leaves. So we want to log that information. So 
this is uh, this, this this is the created service. But now the application itself relies on the on the uh, on the smaller parts of the interface, on the specific interface. So we have one dispatch train for truck and dispatch train from truck. But we know that the, the truck doctrine repository implements uh, truck repository, which implements those two uh, those two uh, in, which extends those two interfaces. So we can substitute uh, the specific interface with more uh, plus, we can substitute them basically. So we have a single, uh, single responsibility principle in here because two, two services do two separate things. Doctrine repository loads data from Doctrine or saves data in, 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 doctrine, in database. And then logging is done in a separate service. We have a uh, we have a uh, we have a separation of uh, interfaces. We have substitution, uh, and we have a dependency inversion, which is uh, uh, dispatch train, which is basically those two interfaces. Right, that was stressful. Um, yeah, this is where the code is. Um, uh, if you want to have a look and. Um, yeah, someone just asked if I wanted to, if I was willing to share. Yes, this is, uh, uh, the code is, uh, uh, is shared on the, on GitHub. And uh, um, I actually have a code in here as well, which I wanted to do a small demo. Uh, right, so I said that I have a one simple method to run it. So, Many developers have that. You run make dev. It installs everything what you need, creates the images, sets the application up, runs tests. It's done. It's uh, it runs. Then I can. This is a uh, postman. I can check that my application is working. It is working. Not sure if you can see it, but uh, this is basically the domain which um, traffic is uh, creating for me it's train station but that's that's the folder name docker.localhost very simple i don't have to think about anything i just add one or two lines of code to to my um, uh, to my setup and if uh, if someone if a person i share that with uh, doesn't use uh, traffic they they can they install traffic easily or they can uh, they can just add a one line to Docker Compose, expose the port we want, and and it doesn't break anything. So, so my my API has two train stations. Um, uh, yeah, with with tracks and uh, yeah, okay. So the first thing I want to show you here is uh, so as I said. I like to write. Um, uh, I, I, I like to use Behat to um, to kind of describe the application behavior. So here's my feature file, which describes uh, different scenarios for the application. Those scenarios are basically a direct translation of uh, of the rules which I presented at the beginning of the of the of the application. So we have a, a first scenario is the, just a basic one. Local, local train can stop at the track of a short platform. So we have a train station with a couple of platforms. Uh, when you dispatch a local train with number, it, it, it then it, the train should arrive, uh, should be on that assigned to that platform. So I'm going to show an example in here. So this one. So um, I have no trains assigned as, uh, right now. I've cleared the database, but I was making sure that everything will be working for me. So I'm going to I'm going to assign to the Paddington station, uh, which has a couple of long uh, uh, platforms, short platforms, and empty platform. And I'm going to send uh, dispatch a um, a fast train. According to the rules I've set. Um, the fast train should be uh, dispatched to a uh, to a platform without uh, uh, without a track if one exists as a preference. So let me reload that. 
So the train could go to the long platform as well, but it didn't because there was a um, yeah there was a platform with no uh, there was a track with no platform and the train went to that one. Here we go. If I dispatch another train, so let's say different number. So it goes to another empty platform. Platform A is empty. I will reload and we have two trains dispatched. Yeah, now if I dispatched yet another train, uh, different number, yeah. So, so now, uh, now the train arrived at the track number one, which is a long platform because there's no uh, tracks without platform available for for the train to to arrive to 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 use. Now I can okay. So yeah, that's it. It's a simple application, but it's um, it's uh, kind of. Um, uses a couple of techniques. So I wanted to, the first thing I wanted to show is uh, the bit I showed earlier regarding repositories. So in, in my application, I, I have a command called dispatch train uh, controller, sorry, uh, dispatch train. And that one single action for my controller is quite heavy. It requires just one handler, but it's lots of going on in here and I just don't like it's already 50 lines long. Um, and to my liking, it's, it's becoming too big. So it unfortunately does two things, but I just did it for simplicity. Uh, I could make train being done in the uh, argument value resolver. So instead of creating one from JSON in here, it would be created uh, in a resolver so I wouldn't see it in the controller. So this bit would go away. But basically the, this, this action is down to dispatch train handler and uh, uh, which handles the common dispatch train and catching a couple of errors which my 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 come from from the from the dispatching so if the train if there's tr no track available you get an exception and if in invalid train is dispatched you may get an exception as well and as a result it redirects to a to the specific track uh, which the train was uh, dispatched to, so um, as a result of the of the action. Um, so then I have a track called controller action, which it's um, uh, which is less lines. It's just forty, but I have two actions in here, mainly because both actions are kind of tiny and uh, uh, tiny and small. But I could. I, I probably should split it into into two separate uh, controllers with two separate actions and with uh, one each controller with one actions on uh, one action only. Coming back to our track doctor repository, um, it implements track repository, which is basically uh, two uh, which extends to in interfaces. And watching each interface is one uh, one dependency. They use in two different uh, contexts. One is to dispatch the train, another one is to free the track. Uh, but it's the same doctrine repository, so I kind of make a sh made, make a, I made a shortcut to to make it easier for me to create one just one repository repository class. Um, but uh, yeah, and then this is uh, our decorator, which decorates uh, track repository. So. It takes as a dependency track repository, but also implements track repository. So classic decorator pattern, it does what it needs to do. So logs information in here and then calls the parent method to, to, this, to the, decorated method, the decorated class to, to, to execute the action. Uh, why I like this approach? It's because um, I can have a different logging uh, mechanism or I can have a caching added on top. I can, I, I may want to cache before, uh, before logging or I may want to cache after logging or I may have a different levels of caching. 
uh, with, with, or I may want to modify results in some, some way, then shuffling like uh, decorated repositories is, is simple. Just change the order of, uh, of services being decorated in your services YAML instead of uh, trying to modify your code uh, and change the way code works. Um, yeah, okay. Um, okay, so I think we can go to questions. If there, are, if there are any questions, I can't see them in here. There's no questions yet. Uh, Marek, could you show us how, um, um, where are your doctrine entities and how do they look like? Oh, my doctor. Oh, that's an interesting one. Um, doctrine entities. So, um, two things in here. Um, I have a models in, 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 in my code in the train station, uh, in a namespace called train station station. And I have a station uh, model, uh, which has a couple of um, business logic in, in embedded in here. For example, dispatch train. Uh, so it, uh, it can check if the train can go to the right uh, track and, and dispatch that. And if the track is not available, it throws an exception. Uh, but uh, this model is not the doctrine model. I keep doctrine entities separate so I have a basic station entity, uh, which basically it's, um, uh, which once loaded from database, it gets uh, converted into standards, like the model uh, domain uh, model. So it's kind of like a uh, data, it's not even an entity, it's just a, like a, it's kind of like a data representation, data object, yeah loaded from directly from database and then uh, cast into the object I actually want in my domain. I see. It's very simple. It's very simple because it doesn't do anything. I like that there's no noise. There's no... Some people might argue that it's duplication. You have the same uh, concept represented in two ways, but it's actually I feel it's more like there's two separate responsibilities here. One is persistence, and that's what we call station entity. And then your model is where you have your business logic. Quite nice. Well, well, if if I wanted to do it in um, in in uh, even like separated in a better way, I would actually put all my business logic in a separate uh, repository which has no knowledge about, uh, like a, it's a pure code, has no knowledge about anything, uh, and it's just pure PHP. And then uh, in my, uh, then the, pro the Symfony Flex application would be just a consumer of that code, like as a separate, as a, uh, uh, as a, as a dependency. And then you can basically build a Symfony application around it. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. But How do you write this entity back to the database? Yeah, sorry, I'm calling it entity because Doctrine is calling it entity. Uh, it's not yeah. an entity in the DDD terms, but it's an entity in the Doctrine terms. So in, in this case, in this application, I have no writing to database, right? So, um, so the good example is, um, so it, my station is aware of, uh, of the, of the, has a station ID because I, I kind of I need it. My track entity has a unique ID, but it's a concept only known to the database. It's in 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 my domain. I I have a tracks ordered by number, so I don't need a extra ID to to kind of have a unique ID across many uh, many stations. Um, but in in this application, I don't have a writing to uh, to the database. So if if I had it, I would probably have something like uh, 
I would have two methods. So one would be on the entity would be public function from public static variable from uh, track and that would uh, create entity new self entity UID would be UID answer UID four entity track number would be uh, I need to add a track in here. Uh, people are suggesting you forgot about specs. Um, I wouldn't write specs for uh, for such a simple class, but um, yeah, uh, there should be a spec. By the way, are you going to open source this project? There's multiple questions about it. It should be as a MIT license in, in GitHub, right? Oh, is it open yet? Yeah, it's public. Try to copy the link. Yeah, it has a MIT license. MIT. So, are there any questions tomorrow? Don't be shy. So there are two ways. I can I can create it create entity from 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 a track, or I can I can do it directly in the repository. Uh, uh, I can have a public function persist. Uh, There's a question from one of the attendees, Mark. Yeah. Would you use the same approach for larger domains and multiple people on the project? Is there something uh, you would like to improve? Um, it depends on the project, really. Uh, it depends what the. Uh, I've used that approach on one of the projects in the past, and it worked really well. Uh, and that was four people working on the project, but we mm -hmm. were kind of like working all together very closely. So that was uh, that was relatively simple. Um, we kind of work together, same team from, from the start of the project. Um, the reason why I would, would use approach, this approach, and um, is that you, you get a good uh, documentation in, in the form of uh, uh, Gherkin scenarios. They really, they're easy to read and easy to understand, and they kind of explain quickly what the application is doing at the at the um, uh, kind of like a acceptance level. Um, and then you, you, when you use PHP spec, spec is kind of the same. You can just search for the object you're looking for and read what, what it's doing by reading the function names. So either in the file or uh, checking the, um, uh, running the spec with a specific, a specific file. Mm -hmm. So. So do you feel this approach is better for bigger projects or smaller projects? Or, uh, it or is not a good categorization of problems? I don't think it's... Uh, so it depends what you're doing. I mean, uh, to, to put that thing together, it took me uh, maybe six hours, seven hours. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's lots of code written and it's relatively... It took me relatively little effort, I would say. Uh, oh, you can't say that. All the effort is uh, in your past experience, I would say. True. Um, the, the past experience, uh, it's, a, it's a huge contributor to that. I mean, um, 
I mean, as an example, uh, I, I had a short assignment a couple of weeks ago where I looked at the Laravel application and um, uh, application was written in a way that uh, it was um, the perfect example, active record uh, pattern, yeah. right? It's um, the, you know, the way Laravel does things by default is that your model is tied, couple, uh, is, it's coupled to the database connection. So it just assumes that you know what fields database will have. It's kind of like a one-to-one -one mapping and it's, um, you, you can't even in the code see what, what fields are in, in, in your model which to me, it's kind of like a mind blown. And like, how would I know, uh, you know, what, what it does? It's just like, it, it, it's, it's, uh, it's, not a, it's not a model. It's merely like a structure, like a struct mm -hmm. from, from C or like, a, you know, like an array, but just like standard object. So, with, there's a few more questions since we started talking. Yeah. So one's a bit out of scope, but, um, is there some reason why you don't use binary UIDs? Um, no, no reason. I just used uh, UID. Well, um, I use uh, UID uh, version four mainly because I've used them most of the time, mm -hmm. and on smaller projects they don't they don't uh, matter. It doesn't matter really. There was a discussion which I was part of on Twitter some time ago. Uh, which ones are better? So, if you need sorting, probably you want to go for uh, for UID six. And if you want uh, uh, if you want uh, uh, smaller footprint on your database, you might want to go for the binary ones. But uh, I mean, uh, in this example, it's irrelevant. It's basically it's up to you. In in the, yeah, it was at, just a side question. Yeah, 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 yeah sure. Uh, the, the one thing I wanted to add is, uh, if you look at the code, uh, where is station ID? So, I, my model station depends on the station ID, right? I have a station ID final class in here, which could be an interface, and which would mean that, or you could be in your infrastructure implementation, which means you could uh, define your station ID the, the way you want it. It's, uh, it's, it's just decoupled from the model and uh, it's just to identify properties. So um, yeah, it's very so clean. It, it gives, you, gives you freedom basically to, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I, I, I personally don't and, like uh, the auto, auto increment. So for me, this, the IDs are, the UUID is the kind of like the thing to go. All right. Um, there's a couple of questions about your test tools. So um, questions like why PHP spec and not PHP unit? You can get the same output with PHP unit test docs switch. And, um, um, and then there's... Um, okay, let's go one by one. Okay, go on then. Okay, yeah, okay go, go on, on then. Okay, go on. Uh, why... Later. Uh, why I use uh, uh, PHP, why I prefer PHP spec? I don't know. It's, um, I can use PHP unit uh, the same way. I professor can be used with PHP unit. Um, I was not aware of, uh, of a tool to generate uh, nice docs from PHP, from PHP unit. Um, uh, I don't know, it's just a habit and just preference. Uh, it's, I, I kind of like the, verbosity of, of PHP spec and, you know, asking questions uh, uh, and helping me to, to, to write code quicker. I see. Yeah, that second question is very similar because Tamil says, using PHP spec plus BHUB plus PHP, it seems quite a nice setup. Um, could you sum up of the plus points of, the, of that versus uh, just using PHP unit for all of testing? Um, so, in my experience, when you use just PHP unit for, uh, so yeah, I, I, I know that you can use uh, uh, basically PHP unit for all, all of your testing, but in my experience, it um, developers get confused and you get uh, PHP unit, mm -hmm. uh, you, you get unit tests leaking into your, inter, in, in, 
your integration and then integration tests leaking into your unit test suite. It requires kind of lots of uh, uh, strong will to and, and Vivillian to, to make sure that you, you have unit tests in, in your unit suite and you have integration tests kind of like separated. PHP spec uh, will prevent you from uh, making like, um, uh, will prevent you from writing a, uh, like code or um, trying to even test uh, stuff which you don't know, you don't own. While with PHP unit, you can basically do whatever you want. Mm -hmm. So I find PHP unit kind of like a little bit lower level, uh, kind of like a uh, PHP unit is powerful. You can you can you can run. You can it's it's kind of like a runner for any type of testing you want. Uh, PHP spec it's kind of like more opinionated. It's it's kind of like tailored for just one specific way of writing tests, and um, and I can kind of like it. And I kind of like it that I, I have them separated. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, Steve have noticed that um, you're writing SQL queries in your repository instead of using Query Builder. How come? Uh, just easier. Short answer. Just, just uh, I mean, uh, I could write a Query Builder. Yes, um, I could use it. Uh, it's it's to me it's an implementation detail. I mean, this is this is a example and. Uh, um, yeah, and I just wanted to see it works. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I was looking at it as well. I like how you um, use your doctrine entities. It's kind of a read model only. Yeah. And then any updates go with SQL queries. Quite easy. You don't have state there yeah, to worry about. That was the uh, purpose of it. That's what I said. It's like if I wanted to have a persist uh, uh, method, I would probably uh, do the track. So that method returns me an array, and I just in, in insert this into the database. Could you show us the mapping? You're mapping to data, but you have any mapping. You should, I guess. Oh yeah, I use um, I use uh, XML for mapping. And uh, where is my mapping? Maybe it's in here. Let's see, nice. Are there any questions? More questions from the audience. The mapping, the good question here is that if you notice that I don't use any prefix, so I can actually map a domain model if I want it directly mm. to doctrine. So I also keep the, anything which is not domain related in infrastructure folder. So I have a doctrine here in the model representation for my station uh, repository, which is again, find station is just a read model. And um, yeah. Um, Tarmo have responded to your PHP spec versus PHP unit question. Mm -hmm. um, he says, okay, that really explains um, a lot. Personally, I have used PHP unit for all those, but I have separated my test to test suits. E2A, E2E tests, reclient requests, uh, functional test against the database for real, for real services, integration tests that my services are talking to each other other correct way, lots of mocking there. And finally, unit, no mocks at all, real unit tests. With that setup, I can easily see how to use PHP spec with the PHP unit setup. Yeah, so it's uh, on a larger projects you might, you may end up having number of level of tests uh, and different integration levels of tests. So you may want to use BHAT for acceptance, mm -hmm. which is just about code and you don't care about uh, database access, but you can use BHAT with database access and uh, uh, and having like, like a smoke test. You, you may have a separate uh, 
uh, functional tests in PHP unit. I personally have nothing against PHP unit. I actually quite like PHP unit. It's, um, but as I said, I just like verbosity of PHP spec and kind of like, um, I, I like to separate them in, in three big buckets, which is integration, acceptance, and unit. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. But at different projects, you know, it might be more buckets and the same tool might be reused for, for, for multiple different uh, testing levels. Right. Are there any more questions from the audience? Your last chance. Otherwise, I think you can easily reach Mark on uh, Twitter or just create issues on his repository he just published. Yeah. Ask questions. Have a look. Um, it's a very nicely done example project. Um, there's some thank yous on the chat, Mark, for you. Oh, there's a question. Is there a reason why you don't use annotations on your entities? Uh, yes, there is. And I actually recently done a project where I use annotations uh, for my entities and I found them harder to read. It might be a result of the fact that basically most of my mm. career I've used XML and it's basically easier for me. The other reason is that uh, if you use uh, IDE, you can, uh, IDE will help you how to complete an, uh, XML mapping and it won't help you with annotations. Mixes. Yeah, I use annotations for, uh, for uh, my controllers though. which annoys me in PHP Storm because as soon as you add a root annotation, it complains that uh, uh, the dog block is missing um, uh, <laughs> parameters. But if you, hmm? but if, you remove it, if you remove it, it's fine. No more questions? Right, no more questions. Any closing remarks, Mark? Um, closing remarks. Um, I, I don't know. Does that suggest where you just hit Alt Enter and change that setting? Hmm? There's a suggestion for you from the audience. Just hit Alt, Alt Enter and change that setting that annoys you. How do I change it? It says update. Alt enter. Mm, there's no option to change to disable it. The top one. Ah, but that's not going to do what you want to do, is it? I, that, that's the well. That's not what I want. I mean, this is a. I, I have everything. Um, Sorry, I have everything um, uh, type hinted in here, so I don't need a obsolete like super. Yeah. People are suggesting you can disable it, so. I'm, I'm pretty sure you can, but um, I probably didn't spend enough time to look for it. Yeah. Nice. Well. Okay, so the closing remarks is that uh, um, if, if anyone has any questions, uh, um, I'm free to chat anytime via Twitter or via GitHub. And uh, yeah, feel free to ask any questions you want.